going into it. Uh, so we thank this beautiful uh, we thank you for the opportunity for the freedom in our lives today, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house today, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you just watch over. We ask that you bless Brother Sean to bring his word today, Lord. Lord, we ask that, uh, that anybody that is watching, listening, or here in this house that is lost, Lord, that they would come to you today, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We give you all praise and glory. Jesus, in your mighty name, we say amen. Amen. You may as well actually stay standing for me before I read now. Then you can be seated. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then said Joshua, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave and the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of the men of war which went with him, Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not. Everybody say, Fear not. Nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. Did you get that? He said, Against all your enemies against whom ye fight. And afterward, Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees. And they were hanging uh, upon the trees until the evening. And it came to pass. Uh, at the time of the going down of the sun that Joshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees and cast them into the cave wherein they had been hid and laid great stones in the cave's mouth, which remain until this very day. And everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated if you can this morning. I didn't realize I had a microphone for a minute. I apologize. Uh, <clears throat> you say, all right, Sean, we're going to talk about defeating the enemy. No, we're going to talk about Jesus defeating the enemy. Come on, Amen. I expect you to get a response out of that. I said, we're going to talk about Jesus defeating the enemy. Can I get an amen? The, uh, you see, here's the problem. Uh, I myself can do nothing, but through Christ all things can be done. Amen? Uh, Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But I want to put some perspective on this. The children of Israel had a promise. Glory to God, they had a promise of old, Sister Hazel, that they would walk into this land, that they would go into the promised land, that they would have a good thing, that they would be able to live there in peace, and they'd be able to live there with all the prosperity that they could bless. Hi, Sister Diane, by the way. Uh, they, they'd be able to, to live there. They had that promise, Sister Diane, but there was something in the way. Come on, amen? You say, what was in the way? Well, the people that was living there, the Canaanites. And you say, well, all right, so there was a big bunch of the Israelites, they could go whoop them. Well, we found out in the Battle of Jericho, or actually right after the Battle of Jericho, that it wasn't that easy for the Israelites to do anything on their own. Can I get an amen? They had destroyed Jericho, the big walls of Jericho. You ought to see the statistics on how they think those walls were. But they destroyed the walls of Jericho. And they tore them down, Brother Mullet, and everybody, they thought they was all that in a bag of Doritos. Come on. They thought they had it booked. Of course, you know, Annie, or, uh, I think it was his name. Anyways, he, uh, he held back some stuff from Jericho, and they went out to the battle again, and they got defeated. And so they all got back, Joshua and all of them, they got down and cried and prayed, and they said, what happened, Lord? And he said, somebody sinned. And so, of course, they took care of the problem. And then they went with the Lord's blessing, and they won again. But the point of that little piece of the story is this, is that without God they couldn't do anything. Amen? Without God, they could not defeat the battle that was in front of them. Without God, Brother Kilburn, they couldn't win. Alright? So that's cool. We kind of knew that. Where are you going with this? So 2,000 years ago, I was bound in sin. 2,000 years ago, I couldn't save myself. 2,000 years ago, I couldn't get out of trouble. I 
can save myself now, but you know what I mean. 2,000 years ago, I had no options. 2,000 years ago, there was nothing. 2,000 years ago, I was defeated. Can I get an amen? amen. Glory to God. But 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus, glory, a man fully God and fully man, hallelujah, stepped out of heaven. Oh, hallelujah. And he began to walk upon the face of the earth in a way that he had never walked. You know, it wasn't like the first time that Jesus had ever been here. Because if you get reading the Old Testament, he was in the fire with the Hebrew children. And he is most likely the one who come and talked to Gideon. And he's most likely the one who talked to Abraham and bargained about Sodom and Gomorrah. He's most likely, when it says an angel of the Lord appeared, most of the time, hallelujah, it was Jesus who had come down to interact with humanity. But this time, he took on something that he had never taken on before. And he took on the body of the man. And he come down here, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he walked perfectly for 33 years. They nailed him to a cross. Glory. Hallelujah. He died and he paid for my sins. He went down. He got the keys to death and hell. After he conquered the grave, he come up. Hallelujah. And he sat on the right hand of the Father making intercession for me. And you say, Sean, you say that every week. But let me put it to you like this. Sin had me bound. But because that God is with me, because Christ lives in me, I am no longer bound by sin. I can take my foot and lay on the neck of the kings and know that I am victorious victorious over sin. Sin can't stop me. Hallelujah. Sin can't defeat me. You're saying, Sean, you mean if you sin, you don't get in trouble? No. I mean that I have an advocate with the Father. If I err, I can repent and get right with God. Hallelujah. I have a choice about the fact that I no longer have to do bad. I can choose to do good. Amen. Amen. I want you to think about that for a minute. Is that not amazing? He said, he said, go get those five sinful kings and bring them out here. And he called the leaders of the army and he said, put, put your foot upon the throne. And be of good courage. Fear not. Fear not. How many of y'all are scared of failing. Oh, come on. You all going to have to interact with Who's lying in this audience? Come on. I said, who's scared of failing? Amen? Who's scared of sinning? I mean, come on. Right? We, we, all live, we all live in that kind of fear. I, I, I would bet that those boys, the next time they strapped on their sword after, after they got whipped after Jericho, I bet they were a little bit skeptical. Don't you? I'd have been a little bit worried. One of them, some of them died. I'd have been a little bit scared that this would be the next thing. Come on. But what we fail to realize the difference between us and them is, is that Jesus has already stood in the gap for us and we can't be defeated. Oh, I said we can't be defeated. You say, but Sean, what if I fail? That's why we have an act forget with the Father. So if you fail, you can get back up. You can't be defeated. Lord, now I'm a firm believer that you can jump off the ship. You can fall off the wagon. Whatever you want to do. I'll even tell you to run the other direction. But I'm telling you that as long as you are seeking the face of God, then you have an advocate with the Father and you are good. When your heart is right with Him, then you cannot be defeated. You don't need to fear about failing God when your heart is genuine in serving the Master. You see, the reason they didn't have to fear when Joshua brought them out there is because they were in one mind and one accord with God and they were obeying the Father and He said, and boys, as long as you're in line with me, you ain't got nothing to fear because sin has been done, been put under the foot of the master, and you don't have to be defeated. Amen. You say, but Sean, what if I do wrong? You have an advocate. You don't need to fear. You say, but Sean, sometimes I struggle. Preach. Come on. Don't we all struggle? Glory to God. I lived in fear, and I, and I didn't want to go down this road, but it looks like I'm going to, and I didn't see this coming. But I lived in fear. Uh, uh, I could even tell you when it started. I could even probably take you right back to the exact room where I opened the door to fear. And I, I become so scared that my actions would not be my own, Sister Kelly, that somehow that something I would do would be so horrible. 
that, that I couldn't even uh, fathom it. I, I was afraid, Sister Judy, that my actions would, would just somehow that I would do something bad. And, and I lived in that fear for four years. Four years I lived in that kind of fear. And I got to the point where I was almost mad. And I mean that in a literal sense. I was about ready to have a complete breakdown. And I would say it and I would pray continually. And say, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me. Lord forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me. And I, you couldn't even have a conversation with me. Because I was continually praying under my breath. Because I lived in such fear. Hallelujah. In such fear that I would fail the Father. In such fear that I would do something incomprehensible. In such fear. And, and I remember. I remember one time when I was in vet school and we was I was working the uh, the six to midnight shift on the on the equine medicine side and and we had what we call an isolation barn and, and it was uh, all over the way. it was several hundred feet away from the main barn and, and I went down there and we had these there was uh, four stalls and each stall had a room they got, they called an ante room and there was a hallway and I and I went in I think it was the second ante room and I I barely had signal on my little Nokia cell phone uh, you remember those for the old people that had those. And uh, and I and I made a phone call. I didn't even usually miss. He prayed with me perpetually. I seldom ever didn't ever get prayer from anybody other than Missy. But I was so broken that night, and blessed Missy's heart. She prayed her guts out over me and couldn't do a thing with me. Come on, Amen. And I was so broken that night, and I I called my mom, and I said I was crying, and they, there wasn't nobody around. It was just me. It was getting close to midnight or probably 9 or 10 at night, somewhere in there. And, and I was in the corner of that room and that barn. I didn't have no lights on. I didn't know if anybody knew where I was. And I didn't care if they knew where I was. Amen. Glory to God, I got down in the corner of that room and I called Mom. And I said, Mom, I, I, I'm scared. Mom, you got to pray for me. I said, I'm afraid. Job said this when his family died. He said, the thing that I have feared the most has come upon me. Hallelujah. I called Mom and I said, Mom, you got to pray for me. I said, the thing that I have feared the most has come upon me. And I said, I have no idea. Idea. And I was scared, Brother Mike. I was so tormented in my mind. I wasn't even sure anymore, Sister Shirley, what I had done and what I hadn't done. My, I was broken. You say, Sean, you're sounding crazy. I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. If you, glory, it's just a testimony. You might as well get on board with me. Hallelujah. Because if it wasn't for his delivering power, I wouldn't be here now. And you can't sit here and tell me that you ain't been broken. And you can't sit here and tell me, glory to God, that you ain't had struggles. And you can't sit here and tell me that you hadn't been in need of a Savior. Or that you hadn't been so scared of failing. Hallelujah. That you couldn't do nothing with yourself. I was gripped with fear. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I sat down and I called mom. And I said, mom, you got to pray for me. I said, the thing that I have feared the most, I'm afraid has come upon me. I said, I don't even know, mom, what I've done and what I've not done. And we begin to pray. And God began to speak. Glory to God. And he said, he said, you don't even think about it. You don't even let it cross your mind. And I thought, what? He never told me what I had or hadn't done. You get it? But he said it don't matter. Because he put it under the blood. Hallelujah. That ain't the end of the story. Hallelujah. Because he put his foot on the neck of the devil. And he said his heel would bruise the head of the serpent. Somebody amen. ought to say amen. amen. Come on, glory to God. And he put his foot on the neck of the enemy and he said, fear not. You have got this. They are defeated. It's not by your own power, but it's by the power of the Most High. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I got a little grip on myself. Come home a few years after that. I don't know how this all played out in the scheme of things. Couldn't tell you. But I know that it was almost four years or a little past. And, and I, I kept growing in the spirit, but yet my mind battles was there. Can I get an amen? I, I was still battling this, this mortal fear of failing, of doing something wrong. So horrible. If you've not lived in fear, God, be thankful. Come on, Amen. If you've not lived in fear, be thankful because it's a bad place to be. Huh? I didn't trust my mind. I didn't trust my mind. I didn't trust my body. Come on, amen. You, 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 you didn't think you had any control at all. And I would pray, 
Lord, I would pray, and the Lord would speak to me, and, 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 and Missy would pray, and the Lord would speak to me, and I'd go to church, the Lord would speak to me, time and time again, he'd tell me to let it go, he had it, and I was good, one thing or another, but Brother Mike, I'd always, my, I remember literally laying on my bed and praying for God to find me in a good spot and take me. When I had my sins out of the blood, just take me on, because I, I didn't want to live in that kind of fear and do something wrong. Come on, amen? Somehow, through the scheme of things, I got a hold of a book by D.C. Talk. And it had a poem in it about death and about fearing death. And uh, Brother Bill had called me to preach at Garrett one morning. We wasn't even going up there then. And he called me to, to come and preach. And so I did. And the Lord led me use that poem. And it's really unusual. You know, I don't like doing things like that. I like a good piece of scripture. But that morning, he had me preach on that right there. And I told him when I started, I said, I don't know why he's having me preach this. But I began to read that poem and God began to move and I began to preach or he began to preach through me. Amen. Glory to God. And I want you to know that I don't know if anybody else in the building could care less what I had to say, but I know that God was preaching to me. Come on, amen. And I know there were some other people afterwards said it was good, but I know what was going on in my mind that morning. God was breaking down the chains. Come on, amen. God was reminding me that the five kings had been pulled out of the cave. Their armies had been subdued by Christ in heaven. The foot of God had been placed on the throat of the enemy. Hallelujah. And I had nothing to fear. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I want you to think about that. I, 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 boy, I tell you, after that service is over, I felt so good. It was the best I felt in a long time. But I wasn't completely free. The next day come. Hallelujah. The next day came, and I, I was by myself, and I was just thinking. And it just clicked. Just like that. Just Adam family. <laughs> Not the Adam family. Yeah. But it just clicked. Like that, Sister Connie, that I had control of my own actions. That I wasn't going to do anything that my that I didn't tell my body or let my body do. You say, Sean, that's intuitive. Yeah, I know it is. I know it is. But if you wasn't scared of sin, then you would have already figured that out too. Come on, amen? What? Let me, let me go back on that. All the things that God had been telling me for four years that I wasn't going to do anything, that I, I had control, it was okay. It all just clicked, just like that. He broke a bunch of chains off me, and the next day, Brother Mike, I stepped into the beginning of the fullness of my complete deliverance, and the fear had fallen off of me in the realization that wait a minute I don't have to be scared of what I'm going to do if I don't want to do it then I ain't going to do it whoa come on amen he put his foot on the neck of the enemy and he said fear not I've subdued it I don't have to be subject subjection to my lusts I don't have to be subjection to my fears. Come on. I don't have to be subjection to my emotions or my impulses. Oh, glory to God. Somebody ought to be getting a hold of that this morning. I don't have to be. I don't have to be subjection to what goes on around me. I can choose. Hallelujah. What I do. Glory. You say, Sean, how's that apply? It applies like this. You don't need to be scared of sin. Because if you don't want to do it, you got control over your actions and you ain't gonna you ain't gonna do it. Amen. Amen. Glory. Ain't that cool? Don't you just you're like, well, Sean, I knew that. And they're like, no, you didn't, because you wouldn't be scared. Think about it. If you really get a hold of that, then you know you're not gonna sin because you don't want to. And in those cases when you do flood up, because heaven knows we all got them, can I get an amen? amen. Then you got an advocate with the Father. Then you can go and you say, God, I repent. I changed my mind. I'm sorry. 
for what I've done wrong and God I don't want to do it that way anymore and you can go back and make right with people you can forgive people and you can not live in fear glory hallelujah amen I, I don't know if that's clicking in your mind but it makes me feel good hallelujah to know that the armies of the enemy has no power over me to know that all hell can assail me and it can't break me Come on, amen. To know, hallelujah, that I can be poor and broken and my body fail and my money fail and my family destroyed and I can still prevail over the enemy. And you say, Sean, you can. No, no, Christ can within me. Hallelujah, Christ can because he's in me. I can because he lives within me. Hallelujah, glory to God. He give me the right, hallelujah, to choose what I want to do and I can choose life over death. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Ain't that powerful this morning? Amen. Ain't that great? Hallelujah. That's just mind-boggling. That he put his foot over the throat of the enemy. And he says, fear not. Oh, it just gets me excited. I got enough hillbilly in me that I like to think about putting my foot on my enemy's throat. Come on. Amen. Don't even be sitting here acting like you ain't done it. Don't be sitting there acting like you ain't never had no thoughts of revenge or whatever. Amen. They, somebody's back there, yes, Lord. <laughs> they, uh, amen. We got confession going on over here. Bless them. They, uh, I heard a lady one time, she was actually testifying, and she said, the Lord really worked with me. She said, I only beat my husband once a week now. <laughs> she was happy. You know what I mean? She was really proud of herself. But she had a right to be. And it wasn't missy either, yeah. <laughs> She still beats me twice a week. No, I'm just kidding. That's what they, uh, but yeah, I mean, and so, you know, I mean, little steps, it's okay. It's okay. Glory to God. But you realize that we have control of our own actions. You realize that we don't have to live in fear. It's not about a feeling, but it's about a knowing. And you say, Sean, I feel defeated. I don't care how you feel. You ain't defeated. You don't have to live. She, you won't preach because you got it. Amen. She's, she's got it over here. Amen. Lord, I'll tag her in in a minute. Let her take off. I do. I do. I preach a lot of what she tells me. It's really true. Amen. But glory. It, 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 yeah, I've done that once too. I had this great message and I thought I got it from Joyce Myers and it was from Missy. It was really funny. But anyway. Yeah, it was. But anyhow, moving on. Glory. But you don't have to live subject to your emotions. How many of you have lived in fear? How many of you have lived in anger and unforgiveness? How many of you have lived in deception? And how many have, have lived in, in a manner in which you were scared you were going to fall off the wagon? How many has lived in temptation? It ain't no fun being tempted. Amen? Ain't no fun being tempted. Glory to God. But it's fun being free. We don't have to live chained. Oh. Let me see if I can find me a prop. Let's see if I can find me a prop. I'm looking for a chain of some sort. But I think I packed, packed my rope off yesterday. See if I can find me a cord or something. That don't work. <clears throat> Give when you want to come tie me up. You can. Mike, come here, tie me up. Give him got to the camera. Give him got the camera. Mike, come tie my hand up here. <laughs> She's mean to me. I want to. I don't want her to use me in public time anyway. You want to. <laughs> yeah. Have you got a Boy Scout badge for that? I don't sir. Me neither. That's the reason I always get somebody else at the time. Because I heard that. And they, we went to work. Hallelujah. See, we live bound all the time. We live bound by fears, and we're limited in what we can do. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We live limited in what we can do because we're bound by fear. Well, I can't go pray for that person because I don't live right myself. Come on. I can't go pray for that person because I got my own struggles. 
I can't go pray for that person because of it. I can't pay my tithes because of this. I can't pay my tithes because of that. I can't, I can't teach Sunday school. I can't preach. I, I can't. Come on, amen. You all just fill in the blank. You all gonna have to work with me. It's like it's like Mad Libs or something. Y'all gonna have to do some work here. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Y'all come to receive. Hallelujah. I came to give. We came to give to the Lord today because He's worthy. Amen. And when we give to God, we get back. Hallelujah. Glory. You see, we live bound up all the time because we are limited by fear. Because we are scared we're going to offend somebody. We're scared we're going to hurt somebody. We're scared that we're going to make somebody mad or, or, or that we ain't good enough or God didn't call us or there's somebody always more qualified than me. I've heard my brother David say that. He's like, well, I don't know. You know, Lord, there's somebody else that can do it. There's somebody else that's qualified or somebody else. Where does that affect? Hallelujah. But you know what? Uh, David had how many brothers was it that was older, bigger, prettier, and tougher than he was? Hallelujah. But God didn't pick them he picked David. Hallelujah. There was a lot of men who was better individuals than Saul, but he got a hold of Saul and he turned him into Paul. There was a lot of people that had a better temperament than Peter, but he picked him because he had him to do a job. Come on, glory. Do you get it? Hallelujah. I'm sure there was a lot more mentally stable people than Elijah out there, but he picked him to do something. Poor Elisha didn't have no hair, but he picked him to do something. Glory to God. See, you don't have to have hair to work for God. Amen. Glory, you don't. Listen, you can do. God can pick you over your limitations. We live bound and we live limited in what we can do for God because we are bound by our emotions. We are bound by our fears. We are bound by our mind. But we are not freed by the living Word of God. Hallelujah. And He said, the ones that the Lord has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. When He pulled the kings out of the cave and put His foot on their neck and He said, fear not, He had subdued the enemy. Hallelujah. Listen, when they never to the cross and he said it is finished all of our sin was paid for hallelujah but it gets better because it said oh death where is I sting and grave where is I victory hallelujah and he went down and he preached to the one that had gone on before and he said you can believe in Jesus come on and get out of the bondage you're in hallelujah glory don't you get it that we don't have to live bound by emotions we don't have bound by fear. We don't have to live bound by our past because He has subdued the enemy. Amen. I ain't limited by my past. I'm only limited when I limit God. Come on, amen? You say, but Sean, you can't do nothing. No, no. no I know. It's all God. It's God. I can't preach without God. Amen. Amen. I can't teach without God. Amen. Amen. Listen, I can run back there and I can grease your hair up with oil. And I can jerk you all around this building and pray for you. But if God ain't in it, he don't mean it. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. I can claim your healing. I can pray over your money. I can put money in my shoe and I can walk on it. Glory. I can anoint prayer cloths to the fact that the oil drips off of them. Hallelujah. I like what there was a meme on Facebook the other day. said you can said uh, you can anoint and pray for somebody all you want to, but until they want deliverance, they're just a greasy demon. Come on, amen? Until you want freedom, until you're willing to accept the fact that Jesus has subdued the enemy, then you're going to live just like this right here. Limited in what you can do for God. Limited in what you can be for your family. Family limited in what you can be in the kingdom because you are living bound with your fear. Come on, amen. Does that y'all getting that this morning? Yes. Say, Sean, are you scared of things? Yeah. I mean, do I really look like I'm that tough and mean of a person that I don't got no fears? Come on. Listen, you want to watch me cower up? Put me in a dark room. Hallelujah. I'm like a. It's bad, man. You know, I, me in the dark does not agree. Amen? It's a good thing I follow Jesus, I guess, because me in the dark ain't got nothing for each other these days. Yeah, I probably wouldn't like that. I'd have been the person down there screaming for mommy when my light went out in the coal mines. Somebody would have touched me and I thought some kind of hate had hold of me and I'd have, I'd have been melting down. Missy's over here nodding. Yeah, he would have, yeah. She come out there the other day and I didn't hear. We, we got two big air-conditioned units on one side of the building. I was out there walking with the dogs and she come up behind me Sneaking. I wasn't real close to you. And I turned around and see her, didn't know she's there, and I'm telling her, I'm about to jump straight up in the air. 
scared me bad. Now, me, and, me and the dark, you said, well, that's just the dark. I got a lot of fears. I'm intimidated by people. I get in front of people and I think, Lord, I can't do this. I, I wound up in the, in the strangest room. I got to testify for a second. You say, Sean, you're going to finish preaching with your hands bound? I don't know. We try to serve God with our hands bound. Maybe we'll try this. Come on, we're going to see how effective it is. You take a man who can't talk with his hands, without his hands, you tie him up, and we'll see how much glory. Come on. Amen. Hey, it's just, this opportunity to come up. And I, I don't know what God's purpose was. I still ain't figured it out. It was, I, I'll spare you the entire backstory because of time. It, it, it ended up that they wanted me to go to Colorado, to Denver, Colorado, to the AVMA conference and speak in, in front of a room uh, with an organization called the AVMF. And this was, what, 2013, 14? Before I come over here. And... Uh, and, I, and, and for a couple of reasons, I had told them no. I, I'd been disagreeing about some things, and I, I said, no, I don't want to come. They did. They said, we'll buy you a plane ticket. I said, I ain't coming without my wife and my kids. They said, we'll buy their plane tickets round trip. I said, we'll put you in a hotel room. We'll pay all that. I said, we'll, we'll register you for the conference, everything. I said, we just want you to come. I said, what do you want me to do? I said, we just want you to talk for five minutes. Ain't nobody ever paid me that much money in my life to do anything for five minutes. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, I didn't walk away with no cash in hand, but we had a really nice round trip. We got to go to the zoo. Okay, it was real neat. And so here I go down there that morning. I ain't Sunday morning, actually. Or Saturday morning. I go down there and I walk in this room. And there sits General Colt, General Colt, the head of the veterinarian branch of the military. There's the past president of the AVMA, several delegates, uh, a lot of the officials from the AVMA. I was sitting in the most politically elite room of veterinarians in the country. Me, from the middle of absolute nowhere eastern Kentucky with my bad lingo and my poor English, I'm in this room and I'm supposed to talk to these bunch of people? Come on, amen? You know what I mean? You get, you get what I'm driving at? Hallelujah. You begin to question at some point what God would do. You know, you're like, really, Lord? I just, I mean, I know you got me here. I figured it out by this point. I know you got me here, but I don't know what you're doing. It's a little intimidating. You get me? You say, Sean, you've done this. It don't matter. Let me tell you something. You get around certain people and you're intimidated. Can I get it? Amen. I, I don't feel unsimilar when I get to headquarters and I see a lot of the big powerful people from the cog down there. You get a little intimidated. You're just like, man, who, you know, I'm, I'm next to some powerhouse men and women of God down here, and who am I? Come on, amen? Who am I? You bind, your, you bind yourself. You bind yourself and you limit yourself. Glory. I, so they got me up there and I'm standing there waiting my turn. And I just had my head down. And I don't think they thought much of me, to be honest with you. Because I just wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't, I was ducking and covering. You know what I'm saying? I was down there, I just meek and mild, had my head down, had my hands in front of me. I just was waiting my turn, not, trying not to draw attention to myself. Can I get an amen? Come on. And I was pondering what the Lord was going to have me to say. Because I wasn't there on a Christian mission, per se. But everything we do is for Christ, isn't it? So aren't we always on a Christian mission? That's a different story. Come on. But I stepped up the microphone, and I raised my head up, and I opened my mouth. Glory to God. And somewhere in the middle of all that, God got some glory out of it. Hallelujah. And I walked away. I can't tell you everything that God done, but I know the former past president of the AVMA reached me his personal phone number and said, you call me if you ever need anything. The Kentucky State Delegate come from me and said, oh, so that was great. Several people come and they, Lord, and, and the guy, the, the past president of the AVMA, Dr. Ford, he come to me and he shook my hand and he said, yeah. He said, uh, he said I talk about Christ in my practice too. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know why I was there, but I know God got the glory out of it. Amen. 
Amen. Glory. Was I intimidated? Yeah. But listen, I could sit back and live in fear all that I want to and the kingdom of God will continue to roll on without Sean. Or I can realize, glory, that he put his foot on the enemy's throat. Hallelujah. That the heel of the Son of Man bruised the head of the enemy. I can realize that he come out of the grave and took the keys to death and hell and that he sits on the right hand of God. I can realize, hallelujah, that I am grafted into the tree and I am not just a brother of Christ but a joint heir in Christ. And I can realize that I am free of what has had me bound. Sin cannot take over my life if I don't allow it. Hallelujah. Fear cannot bind me if I don't allow it. Emotions cannot rule me if I don't allow it. Because I can do all things through Christ who has strengthened me. I am free. I am free. I am free. You get that? How many has been living in fear? Come on. How many's living in fear, depression, anger, anxiety? How many realizes that your work for God is limited because of your emotional state? Y'all shy this morning. Am I hitting too close to home? It's not me, it's God, because I didn't plan this. Is he hitting too close to home? What you think about that? You say, Sean, but, but Sean, I've had prayer. And Sean, but Sean, I've done this. And Sean, Sean, I've done that. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. When your love for God becomes greater than your love for the world. Well, come on. When your love for God, Justin, get the altar call some free. When your love for God, when your love for God becomes greater than your fear, when your love for God becomes greater than your emotions, when your love for God, oh, come on. Where are you at? Why was it? That John, the revelator, did not die in the vat of hot boiling oil. He said, well, it's a miracle. It's the power of God. Yeah. But why was he even willing to go? Because his love for God was greater. Come on, amen? You, you go after miracle after miracle, and almost without exception, when God's power showed up, it was because these men and women loved God to the point that nothing else mattered. Was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego scared? I'd have been scared. It didn't say they wasn't scared. They just said that we know God's able to deliver us even if you don't. <coughs> Amen? Amen? Even if you don't. Was Daniel scared going to the lion's den? Maybe, but he probably didn't care, did he? Come on, Amen? Amen? I don't think David had no fear of nothing. To read about it. I mean, you know, it didn't seem like he had no fear of nothing. The Lord is usually constraining him, not encouraging him. You know, but yet you read his Psalms and you find out that David lamented so much, didn't he? He was so sad. He's like, God, how long am I going to have to run? God, how long am I going to be pursued? Come on, amen. Come on, amen. How long, God? How long, God? Yet David wasn't perfect. God never said we wouldn't have troubles, guys. God never said that everything would be easy. God never said that we was going to be rich all the time or that we wouldn't be hungry sometimes or that we wouldn't be this or that or another. He never promised any of those things. But he said, I'll go with you even until the end of the world. Amen? He said, I'll supply your needs. I'll give you what you've got to have to get there. And he said, he said in one place, he said, if you go talk to the leaders when they arrest you, don't even think about what you're going to say. He said, I'll feel it when the time comes. Amen. Come on. I didn't write my speech when I went to Denver. I didn't plot out where I was going to start. But it's much like preaching when you just get on there and the Lord opens it up, it just flies on it. You just know where it needs to go. Amen. You see, if we'll let go and let God, then things will change around us. Amen. Was the Hebrew children and Daniel worried they might starve to death eating lentils all the time? I don't think it mattered if they were or not because if they were willing to do it for God and for no other reason. Amen? You think about that. 
Everybody rise to your feet this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed for a moment. God bless everybody. You drop your feet.